Hi, I am Vitold. This is the new for 2023 and on KTM 890 Adventure R, which forced some of us to wait for itself as KTM had limited availability of this version in some countries in the beginning of its production. And you know what? Maybe that's for the better. As I have also ridden the regular 890 Adventure before, you may check my honest review of that bike, and some of you may think that you want the R variant but you may be very wrong in fact. And let me explain by going over what this bike offers, what it's like to ride, where to ride it best, and how I score it knowing all other mid-size adventure motorcycles. I will not be riding this motorcycle off the road as I focus on on-road use instead. So if you are interested in this motorcycle to use it as a dirt bike, you may probably find some other reviews that perhaps will tell you more on what you're looking for in terms of that off-road use. What I focus on is how enjoyable all these motorcycles are on the streets because, well, that's where we mostly ride. And also how much fun you can have while being as comfortable as possible at the same time. I'm also not creating advertisements here, but I share with you my fully honest observations and conclusions as this is what I believe is needed here the most. Right now, my perception of the R variant of the 890 is also influenced by the regular variant, which I absolutely love, just with an exception of a one possible deal breaker, which is, well, it's also present here in this R model. But don't you worry, and let's start from the beginning. Some riders may simply need to look somewhere else, as this motorcycle is quite tall and with a non-adjustable seat height at 88 centimeters from the ground. And for me being 183 centimeters tall or six feet tall, it is quite demanding, but still manageable. I cannot flat foot it on both sides. And if I drop both of my legs, then the seat kind of gets in the way and it tries to rip me into two. So if you're shorter or you know that you've got short legs, try it definitely before buying. If you stay in one piece after sitting on it, you're good. Now, if you're torn into two, then well, you know, you've got to look somewhere else. You may get a lowering kit, but what's, what's the point of buying a, a taller a, a bike just to lower it? Just get the lower one, just get the, the regular one. Now, aside from that, it's not overwhelming as it's not too wide in the tank area and and it's not covered by as many plastics around there. So in the end, it creates a perception of being pretty easy to deal with. And sure, it mostly is if you're tall enough again. It weighs 200 kilograms dry, so let's assume that it's around 215, 220 kilograms with all the fluids. Then a lot of that weight is still located high from the ground as the motorcycle is tall. And this is despite KTN's likely most successful effort of lowering the center of gravity as much as possible, for example, by designing this unique 20 liter fuel tank with chambers down low next to your feet. When moving it around, when moving the bike around, you will feel that way. On the side note, you will also feel it much more in comparison to the non-R variant because that's how I'm able to judge that. I'll leave the full comparison of these two for another video soon. When riding, that weight is not so noticeable unless you ride very slowly. The bike is rather stiff when it comes to suspension, despite having enormous front and rear wheel travel at 24 centimeters, along with 26.3 centimeters of ground clearance, which is the top value in the entire segment of adventure motorcycles, all of them. Stiffness helps the bike stay flat without any squatting when accelerating, and also not that much front suspension dive when braking with the front brake. This is seriously surprising to me. I specifically asked the dealer to switch the front suspension to factory settings and they seem to do a great job there in terms of keeping the bike under control. The rear as well, it is still too hard for me anyways and in the end the bike is rather on the jumpy side overall. I wouldn't call it the master of smooth ride in the segment and if that's what you're looking for, well in general KTM won't be your best friend as a brand and also in a form of the 890 Adventure R. I may use the good old BMW F800GS with a suspension setup that would glide over anything on the road like a Rolls Royce. Well, not here though, but wait for my next review. That's gonna be the last bike within the segment. And that one actually is the only one which does that today out of all new motorcycles on the market. Here, with the KTM, you've got a bike that won't bottom out that easily when riding over stones and some 
huge bumps, but in, in order for your back to survive all that, you've got to be probably standing on the backs. But should you even care about that when in the meantime you may sip drops of happiness? when the fuel is transformed into pure joy by this 889 cubic centimeter two-cylinder inline engine with 105 horsepower and 100 newton meters of torque? That's your decision, while I'll tell you that it will influence how you perceive this motorcycle in general. There's plenty of power and torque for this segment and performance is absolutely fine, if not for the fact that you actually aren't getting as much of it as you might expect or even want. Traction control is doing a fabulous job and there are pretty much no slips regardless of situation, which is insanely impressive to me. It's calibrated in a way that it seems as if it wasn't just reacting to slips, but preventing them from happening, which we know is not how traction control works as the rear wheel first has to start slipping and then the system reacts to that as quickly as possible. But in KTM 890 Adventure R, this is just quicker than anyone's brain can notice. This is amazing. Except from noticing the system flashing on the dashboard, obviously. And here comes that but that I introduced a moment ago. It really works wonders, all that, but it is needed as the stock Mitas Enduro Trail Plus tires are more off-road looking and, well, they won't let you use all that power as much as you might want. Definitely not as much as I want to in order to have proper fun on the streets. Then this means not enough grip from those tires to use all that power. And so it makes me ask an important question. Why would there be such an engine in a motorcycle meant to utilize such tires. It clearly isn't the most on-road focused motorcycle with such suspension capabilities and these tires. So there is not much point buying it to ride on the streets. Am I right? Then off the road, there is way too much power that can be used as well, even regardless of the tires. You may swap the tires for proper enduro ones and, and use the bike for harder off-roading and perhaps this would make the most sense. Maybe that's the way it should be. At higher speeds where grip when accelerating isn't a key factor, it does well and it instantly takes off with no drama, which I love so much about KTM two-cylinder engine. Both this one here and the larger 1290 series with a V-twin engine. It's so effortless with smooth power delivery, it's always ready, with not too much vibration, with no strange noises or being too loud and dramatic. It's none of that. It gives an impression of having limits placed very, very far, and it's so great. And of course, it's not as mind-blowing as some motorcycles from the large adventure segment, because of the power, simply, but it's there with the average ones. It does well at very low RPM with no shaking. It can ride in higher gears at rather low speeds and still keep good manners. It's really a very, very good engine that suffers from generating more heat than the bike can get rid of. And this is that possible deal breaker that I mentioned before. In warmer places or simply on warmer days, it is unbelievable how it fries your lower legs and still significantly heats up your upper legs as well. This takes away a lot of joy when for example, in a city or let's say off-roading where you ride slower. Well, from time to time, I would try to switch the engine off when waiting, for example, for traffic lights to change, where I know it takes a while for them to do so. Well, the same thing is there in the non-R variant and also in Husqvarna Norden 901, which is a sibling of these KTMs. It takes only 10 minutes of engine running to start being unbearable and only riding with significant speeds can help that. Just rolling at 30 kilometers per hour does nothing at heat. From the engine still hits straight your legs. It's likely the design of that fuel tank that's sort of storing all that heat right behind itself and it prevents enough wind flow. Fans are quickly on, they are loud and only enhance the whole drama experience. It's a pity. And another pity that got me thinking is that I feel like I'm sitting on my feet because of the foot pegs being way too high for my liking. For some unknown reason, I don't remember it to be such an issue on the non-R variant, while here on the R, it makes me feel like I don't have enough control over the whole bike and I cannot properly grab it with my legs. Maybe it's because it's just taller, so it feels even weirder. 
So instead, I've got to hold the handlebar on this bike much harder. And the handlebar is pretty low, at least lower than you might expect. Add a flat, tall seat and it feels like it's easy to slide and fall off this bike. None of that is how I remember the non-R variant. In such a scenario, having short legs would definitely help. But then, someone would have to hold the bike after stopping at the traffic lights, for example, as we wouldn't be able to reach the ground with our short legs. So yes, I am not exactly uh, and entirely happy with the position on the 890 Adventure R being built the way I am, so rather of average height. The handlebar may be rotated up and, and down and is medium wide, which suits me very well in this area. It gives enough control when maneuvering and it also allows you to squeeze into some tight spots. One more benefit is that it's so high, the whole bike, that it's above all average car mirrors. I don't recall noticing it on any other motorcycle so far. But here I'm like, well, I don't even need to slow down to avoid these mirrors as they all fit underneath the, the hand guards. This is great. Just be careful that some cars are strange now. They try to make you feel like you're in a Jeep Wrangler and they can indeed be higher than they initially appear to be, so those crossovers. Speaking of mirrors, those here are round and I do like that. They aren't the biggest, but at least they don't have a stupid shape preventing us from seeing what's behind us. Square or rectangular ones are the best, I think but these are mostly fine too. They don't vibrate much and generally I would say that this KTM is an annoying vibration free motorcycle. So you already know that it's rather stiff. You know that it's powerful, but how does it handle? It does fine. Being stiff helps it in this area and obviously it's still tall and so it needs time to change directions, but it's not like it's sloppy or anything like that. It's precise when it comes to steering at some higher speeds. It does what you want it to do, and while not being as applicable as some other less off-road oriented motorcycles, we shouldn't have anything in particular to complain about here. Speeding up or braking in a corner leaves the KTM totally neutral, so most importantly, it doesn't suddenly straighten up. Its will to lean very deeply in the corners isn't the best, but if you don't get too crazy and don't ride away too fast, it's still enjoyable. It's just that awkward position on the bike with feet up high and the handlebar rather low. It wouldn't let me unleash all my fantasies, but handling seems fine even despite the tires that fight very hard to match the power when accelerating. One more thing to mention about the position is what it's like when standing on the pegs. And for me, the handlebar is then way, 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 way too low in the standard setting. Or again, the foot pegs are way too high. I either have to bend my legs and squat in a way that I can last one minute, or I've got to bend my back, lean forward to reach the bar. Aprilia Touareg 660 is the only motorcycle in the segment that does it well, if you are as tall or as short as I am. Wind protection is an interesting point, as I don't remember the last time a motorcycle would generate such a clean stream of wind around my helmet. The windshield is, uh, well, it is super low and it doesn't protect your head from the wind. But if you are not on a highway or if you are not commuting between cities a lot, it's actually nice. I personally like having good wind protection, but it's an interesting experience on the 890 Adventure R. This example that you see doesn't have a quick shifted insult, so I may only judge the transmission in general terms, and I do like it. It's smooth, the lever moves up and down with not so much resistance and I think I only once hot a neutral instead of going from the first to the second gear. I tested the quick shifter on the non-R variant, so if you want to see more about that, please head to that video. I'll link it also in the description. A thing to mention here is that because of the high foot pegs position again, some may have a certain difficulty in reaching over the lever and will have to lift their whole foot, the whole leg, reduce gears. It wouldn't bother me that much, but then when it would come to using the rear brake, for some reason that would grab my attention being, or as being 
uncomfortable. I'm not extremely flexible myself in terms of moving my feet. So if you're like me, you might want to try it first. Rear brake apparently also isn't friends with that rear tire as it wouldn't be as effective as I remember it from the non-arm. So you may use it, but for gentle slowing down. ABS does its job preventing the rear wheel from locking. All that is fine here. And almost whole stopping duty then is on the front brake because of that slipping tire. And it's engaging pretty quick quickly in this bike, it gives an okay feel and it is strong enough. Here, due to the long travel suspension, there is a little bit of that nervous behavior if you suddenly engage the front brake because then the whole bike you know, just shifts its weight forward. But then, because it doesn't dive as much as one might expect it, and you may still adjust the front forks even more, it does stabilize and everything is fine. Just that first bite may put it off balance, so be prepared for that. Front and rear suspension are adjustable, so again, keep that in mind. Front one's adjustment system is also brilliant, that's worth mentioning, as KTM installed those wings that you can use to adjust the front suspension while in the rear I need to use tools, which is all in all strange. You'll likely do it once anyway and just leave it. Hey, I bet you've noticed that front fender. Mm, no big, but this Baba Yaga knows instead. All right, I hope that it may be removed and it may look more like the standard 890 Adventure, which I prefer. It's not a beauty in the first place for me in general. With this thing, with this um, Baba Yaga nose, it's becoming even more, let's say, functional than pretty. Now, in terms of equipment, KTN gives you cruise control, non-cornering LED front light, hand guards, a cornering now, ABS, traction control that you can switch off, three standard riding modes that you can select on that nice display that is very clear, it is of good resolution and generally very pleasant. The only downside is that when you switch the indicators on, it doesn't show you which one is on, but it displays that sort of both are on. There's only one icon for them. I don't think that this is uh, perfect. There might be a quick shifter, there may be a center stand, heated grips and many other accessories and options like for example adding a rally pack with a rally riding mode. There is also chain drive here. The front rim is 21 inches while the rear one is 18 inches and stock tires are not good. So all in all it's a bit of a mix this KTM 890 Adventure R. Plenty of performance that cannot be fully used. Awesome. Long travel suspension, that doesn't help in terms of comfort, but keeps the bike pretty stable. And also handling pretty okay, also at higher speeds. Mind you, up to 170 kilometers per hour, as there is a warning sticker on the fairing. Do not exceed that. I got close, and there was no wobble riding solo. The seat here is acceptable, but not the most comfortable, and you cannot adjust its height while you can shift from front to back and vice versa, shift your bum on it. It is not extremely hard and generally shaped okay for my taste, but for longer rides, it may turn out to be too narrow and too hard to give a very, very, very pleasant experience. And then you may be stuck in this strange position on the bike that's totally not suiting me because of the handlebar and the foot pegs. I find it hard to define where to best use this R variant. Filtering traffic is on one hand good, thanks to the handlebar that's high from the ground along with the whole motorcycle and isn't too wide, but on the other hand the bike isn't the king in terms of great balance. It's fine, but at low speeds it's, you know, long travel suspension, you're sitting high, high center of gravity, it's not, it's not perfect, there are better bikes. Then speed up and it's all great. And I'll tell you two things. One is that on VTOL's recommendation board, this new for 2023 KTM 890 Adventure R gets a six and a half out of 10 as a road motorcycle. Two, I'm glad that there is the non-R variant of this thing. The score is influenced by the presence of the 890 Adventure without the R in its name, and it's a very strong influence in this case. I suggest that you check out my honest review of that one or head-to-head -head comparisons between these two. Once it's online, it may shed a lot of light on why I score the bike this way, even though it's mostly okay. But if you see my attitude towards the non-R, you'll see that there's a difference between okay and something more. So see you there.